Hey guys, it's your boy Joe back at it again, codingphase.com. In this video, I want to talk about not limiting yourself, okay? Don't limit yourself to just the code. What do I mean by that, right? Just because you want to be a web developer or a front-end developer, email developer, etc., doesn't mean that you only have to focus on the code. There's other things that you should also focus on. For example, learning a little bit about marketing, it goes a long way, okay? It's gonna take you a long way because I'll give you an example. If you are planning on building a web application, you know, microservice, software as a service, etc., you're gonna need to know how to actually promote this service, okay? There's a lot of people that have great ideas and when they launch it, they have no idea how to market it, how to put it out there, and guess what? It fails. It's a great idea, but because they don't know how to execute it and get it to the right people, then pretty much it just fails and, and they lose out on the opportunity and somebody else comes in that really knows how to do it, takes that spot from them, okay? Another thing that I will say that you guys should also uh, pay attention to is a little bit of design, right? Learn what design is, learn, you know, typography, right? Color theory, um, just knowing what's, when something looks good, okay? Understanding when something looks good and understanding why it looks good, okay? It, it's not something that you have to be born with. It's not a gift from God. It's pretty much a structure, okay? If you're building a mobile application, there's a certain structure that your mobile application should have. Um, if you're building a web application, there's certain um, things that you have to add to your UI that people are comfortable with. For example, if you're going to have, a, I don't know, like a burger, right, or a burger menu or the burger icon, right, which is for the mobile menu, you're not going to put it at the bottom left, okay? Users are not going to be comfortable with that because if every other website puts it in the top right, why would you go and put it at the bottom left, right? Same thing with forms. You're not gonna put a button to submit the form at the top above everything else before people even fill out the form because it doesn't make sense that the person's gonna fill out the form, go to all the way to the bottom, filling everything out, and then from there, come back all the way to the top to click on the button to save it. You, you get what I'm saying? So little things like that can take you further than what you think, right? And also, you know, when you're going to these interviews, you have more skills that you can actually bring to the table. There's a lot of people that all they do is code. All they really know is code, right? Also, too, another thing that I will say is being business savvy, understanding, like, what type of features will be profitable for a business, right, or what type of business models can work for the business, it can go a long way. I give you another example, right? When does a application need to be a single payment? And when does it have to be a subscription payment? When does it have to be a payment for usage? Or when does it become an unlimited payment? When does it make sense? Okay. Same thing as keeping track of how much you're spending on hosting, how much you're spending on you know, promotion, maybe Facebook ads, Google ads, etc. Whatever you're actually doing with your application, keeping track of that, that's key, okay? Same thing for when you're hiring somebody. Maybe you're hiring a freelancer. A freelancer is, is charging you $500, but you're only gonna be able to sell whatever it is that that person is, is, is building for you for 600. So at that point, what you're gonna do? You're gonna give them you know, $500 out of 600, no. So you gotta go in and start looking for another type of freelancer, somebody that could do it, you know, half the price or 20% of the price so you could keep more of your profits, right? Little things like that can go a long way when you are a developer, you know, unless you just wanna be a code monkey, right? And I always say this, don't take the word code monkey as bad it just means that you're only focusing on the code. You're not focusing on anything beyond that, okay? And always understand this. If you don't monetize your skills, somebody else will do it for you. It's very simple.
There's a lot of people that are looking for people like yourself who have certain type of skills but don't know what to do with it. I give you a great example. This is something that happens a lot in, in India um, and, you know, in other parts of the world. But I see it mostly in, in India, right? There's a guy that knows how to actually get clients, right? That can actually go in and talk to, uh, I don't know, a business owner and convince them of signing up for their agency, their SEO agency, their, you know, web development agency, et cetera, right? And that guy gets paid the most money. He don't build anything. He don't code anything. He don't do anything. But guess what? He'll find, you know, five, six developers, three, four, you know, designers and put them on, on, under, under his wing and then pretty much put them on a sweatshop. Okay? They do the same thing here in the U.S. <laughs> People do the same thing here in the U.S. Okay? You don't know how to monetize your skills, right? Guess what? Someone would do it for you. So just sticking to the code could be a mistake in the long run. You need to have all of the skills that I talked about, a little bit of design, a little bit of marketing, a little bit of business sense, right? Understanding how to do research so you can really be successful out here. That's just the truth, right? Um, unless you are just planning for somebody else to monetize your skills and always you work for somebody else. Um, now, if that's your plan and you're trying to, you know, get to 64 years old, 75 years old, you retire and you're like, man, I had a great life. I worked for somebody else. I didn't have to do anything. I got the bare minimum. I did the bare minimum. And guess what? Now I got this little bullshit, uh, you know, 401k. I got this trailer home, right? Instead of retiring like a boss, you're now retiring, you know, on the bare minimum because you did the bare minimum. Understand that. All right. So anyways, man, it's your boy Joe back at it again, codingface.com. I want to let you guys know that, yes, we got a 20% off on Coding Face on the description of this video um, and also to all of my other videos. By the way, for anybody that's already a Diamond member, guys, don't forget tonight, accountability meeting, come through. Okay, this is where you're gonna come in, show your portfolio, show your projects, ask your questions. Okay, you get to see other developers that just got hired, other developers that are going to interviews, so you can learn from them too. Okay, everybody here is in a community. When you come into the accountability meeting, you're gonna learn a lot not only from me, but from your peers, the people that's also applying to jobs and seeing what they did right, what they did wrong, so you don't have to do those same mistakes. Okay, so anyways, man, it's your boy Joe back at it again, codingphase.com. I love you guys. Take care. Peace.